So if we're going to define something new, we've got to start with something simple and build up. So let's start with something simple. So we're going to try to define the natural numbers, and we're going to start with just some notation. Here I've made the assumption that we want to include 0. But 0 is just a symbol. Whether this means what we think of as 0 or not, we haven't given it any meaning yet. And we're going to have a function called successor. So do we have enough if we accept those two things to define the natural numbers? Yeah. What is a successor? What is a successor? So far, we've just said it's a function. It's something that we can use in building our natural numbers. We haven't given it any meaning yet, but it's going to acquire some meaning based on how we use it. So we can use it however we want in this definition to try to give it some useful meaning. If you think of the intuition, what a successor is, a useful thing to think of as a successor would be the next natural number, which uh, a natural way to think of next is adding one. Right? So the successor to one would be two. But we haven't given it any, any meaning yet. Right? We've just made up a notation. So now we want to try to define what the natural numbers are. So do we have a starting point? Do we have any natural numbers already? Good. Zero is a natural number. That's the reason we had that symbol. Congratulations to the what, 17% that said zero. At least for this definition, you are correct. We've got one. How many do we want? Yeah, we want an infinite number. So we're not going to do it by just listing them, right? even if, if the MCS book definition suggested that's the good way to do it. And we don't want to use something like dot, dot, dot. And we don't want to make up any new notation. The, your numerals are just notation. How can we make more? Good, yeah. We've got to find some way, if we have a natural number, to build a new one. So that's what we're going to use our successor function for. We're going to say, if we have something that's already a natural number, and here we can, we can introduce notation. So we're going to use n, just because it's a nice notation. We're going to say, if n is a natural number. How do we make a new one? Yeah. S of n, and, and we can pick some notation. I'm going to write it kind of like a function, because that's a good way to think of it. All right, but that's just a notation that's saying, if n is a natural number, we've got this magic symbol s, and we can put that around n, and that also produces a, a natural number. And it produces a new one. There's a lot we haven't yet defined, right? So we haven't defined anything that tells us how to tell if two numbers are equal, or what adding means, or what it means to be prime. There's lots of important properties in the natural numbers we don't have yet. But can we make as many natural numbers as we need with just these two rules? How do we make three? Okay, yeah, go ahead. S of two. Okay, well, we don't have two yet. Right? If we're going to make three, we've got to make two first. We only have zero, so we better, what are we going to do? Yeah. Well, we're going to have to make one first by copying. Okay, yeah, right? So we can make three. We're going to make, starting from zero, we're going to make it successor. This is a number most of us would think of as one, right? One's just a notation. There are lots of other ways we could capture the property of the successor of zero, we call it. And we got to make two. So that's the successor of the successor of zero. And making two, we're using that second rule. Actually, we already used the second rule. Our rule one, this is our rule two. We use rule one here, because we know zero is a natural number. And then we use rule two that said, if something is a natural number, so is its successor. So that was using rule two. And we're going to use rule two again, where now n is one to make two. And then we're going to use rule two one more time to make a number that we could use to represent three. And we can keep going. This is not the most efficient way to write down numbers, but is really the essence of what the natural numbers are. They're defined based on we've got a way to find for any number. Its successor is also a natural number. Right? And we've given. Successor sort of int intuitive meaning the way we're using it, but there's nothing intrinsic about it. So this way of thinking about the natural numbers, the terminology here, so, so you've hopefully seen recursive definitions, at least in discrete math, and you've probably written recursive programs, which are 
in many ways like recursive definitions, in some ways quite different. We need a base case, right? This is why it's not a circular definition. We're not defining a natural number as a natural number. We're defining a natural number in terms of our base case, zero is a natural number. And in our inductive case, there's an important if there, right? We're saying if something's a natural number, here's how to make a new one. It doesn't depend on already understanding a natural number. It shows us how to build new ones. So this is a constructive definition. There are a lot of really nice things about constructive definitions. So, so it is precise, right? It tells us we're defining the set of natural numbers as everything we can make using those rules. If we understand those rules, we can answer exactly the question of given some thing, yes or no, is this a natural number? Um, whether if we can construct it with these rules, the answer is yes. If we can't, the answer is no. Yes, question? Um, could you explain is successor limited to integers or natural numbers, or is a successor term we'll see other other exceptions? So the way I've defined successor here, it is only defined in this use on natural numbers. The n that's in the successor here is a natural number. We could define other kinds of successor for other kinds of objects. And we could define a successor function. Th there's nothing magic about this. This is really just giving it a name that gives us an intuition about what it is that corresponds to how we use it for defining natural numbers. But it's just a function. It's really just a notation here. But we're using it. You could think of implementing it as a function as well. Yeah, question? So what does add mean? We haven't defined add yet. So our intuition is addition should make sense in this world, right? Because natural numbers, we know what addition is. But the question of are we adding one or does it, if you add two natural numbers, do you get the sum? We haven't defined what addition is yet. We certainly could. For this to be a good definition of natural numbers that matches what we've learned about numbers since we were three years old or earlier, we would like addition to behave in a way that maps these meanings to the meanings that we get when we use addition. But so far, we haven't defined addition. So, so it's not clear whether addition works or not. Our goal would be to, to find a way to define addition that works with this. And maybe we'll, we'll uh, have time to do that in a future class, probably not today. So when you say it doesn't map to your notion of a number, what, in what sense does it not map? Or what, what aspects of it don't map to your notion of a number? Well, the only number I see up there is zero. Um, so we haven't provided a notation. But there are lots of notations for numbers, right? The concept of a number is what you can do with it. You know, this is not the way you would write three, but you know, you could also write three like this. There, there are lots of ways someone could get the concept of three across that also would be unfamiliar. I think I know Chinese. I hope this is right. That's right. <laughs> is that Chinese for three? So that, that, that you might guess is three, and that's why I can write. But there are lots of different notation systems that would write down the concept of three in different ways, right? Whether this behaves like our concept of three, so far it's the successor to two, and its successor is something we could call four. So that sounds a lot like three. Without defining things like addition or equality, which we haven't even defined, we haven't seen enough to say it behaves in all the ways we accept three to behave. But I, I don't think we've seen anything that says it doesn't behave like three. Ah, oh, good question. Are we defining cardinal or ordinal numbers here? Well. So we're defining natural numbers, right? That's, that was our goal. They have more of a sense of cardinal numbers, although using the natural for ordering is also very natural. We could certainly use these as cardinalities, right? We could use these to measure quantities. We could also use them for ordering, right? We definitely have a well-defined order here. The more successors you are, the later in the order you are, right? So these concepts of ordinal and cardinal numbers are, are definitely well, very well connected. And so far, what we've defined really could be used for either. The one thing I would say, because we started with zero, it has a bit more of a flavor of cardinal numbers than ordinal numbers. If we started with one, it would have more of a flavor of ordinal numbers. But that's just an arbitrary symbol, right? I could have used something, you know, I, I could have used a, a smiley emoji or something else instead of zero. Actually, that still looks like a zero. Um, something I can draw, I was gonna draw an apple, that also looks like a zero. Something I can draw that doesn't look like either a house, a zero or one, right? We could use any symbol we want for zero. We're assigning it meaning, and I'm giving it a name that makes it natural to us, but there's nothing special about this yet. Right? We, zero only becomes special once we define addition and multiplication. Then zero starts to have, well, it has special meaning here because it's our base case. If we define addition 
in a particular way, zero could behave like one. We haven't done anything that says zero behaves in the way we expect zero to behave yet. So this is a recursive definition, but it, it's not circular. It's building on from the base case, not assuming we already know. So this way of defining the natural numbers is actually a bit over 100 years old, which in some sense is very recent, given that we have been using counting numbers for thousands or tens of thousands of years. People didn't really think about how to find them until Piano in, in the late 1800s. And he came up with this definition, which is very similar to what I've shown you. It's a little hard to read because it's in Latin. But he's got his base case. And he's got his successor function. This is if a is a natural number, then a plus 1 is. Right? So his successor function actually looks a little more natural to you. It's a plus 1. But it's just a successor function. And you can see that Piano was in the no crowd, right? He started from one, at least the notation that was one. At least in this, this first book about it, he actually changed his mind. Later in his writings, he started from zero. It's controversial. OK, this, this is page one. There, there was a, like a pre-section of notation. By page two, he was already proving that two is a natural number. This is pretty fast moving. Piano was a big influence on Whitehead and Russell who took about 150 pages to get to proving 1 plus 1 is 2. And Piano was already doing it on the second page. And that's partly a reflection of, yeah, these are all axioms, right? So he, he started with a lot of assumptions, not building from scratch, right? So he was the first one to try to build up a concept of natural numbers without assuming we knew what they were and to think really careful about how to define these things. But he also took a lot more for granted. Russell and Whitehead tried to build up from even simpler notions. And he's proving 2 is 1 because 1 is a natural number by this definition, right? And by the second rule, 1 plus 1 is a definition, and our notation for 1 plus 1 is 2. Right? So it's kind of a vacuous proof, introducing this notation of 2 for 1 plus 1. 